This video on heteroscedasticity shows how to implement the Brouch Pagan test on Excel spreadsheet. However, before going into it, remember that a key assumption of the method of least squares is that the residuals of the regression model are distributed with equal variance at each level of the dependent variable y. And this assumption of equal variance is known as homoscedasticity. And when it is violated, we say that heteroscedasticity is present in the residuals. Now, heteroscedasticity means differently scattered, which is the opposite of homoscedasticity, which means same scatter. And if heteroscedasticity exists, what happens is that the coefficient estimates are no longer efficient, causing the results of the regression to become unreliable. And so when we conduct a cross-sectional regression, or any regression for that matter, there are two approaches to determining if in fact we have heteroscedasticity. The first is a visual test. And for example, when you run a model such as this, we want to plot the residuals against the predicted values of y, y hat you know, the fitted values. And if the re residuals spread out at higher levels of y hat, as shown right here, or at lower levels for that matter, it's a telltale sign, as I note here, that heteroscedasticity may be present. So the other way is a formal test. And here, we're going to introduce the brush pagan godfrey test, for short, the brush pagan test in which the null hypothesis is that homoscedasticity is present, meaning that error variances are equal against the alternative that heteroscedasticity is present. And we're going to do that by constructing a chi-square test statistic. And we're going to reject that, this null hypothesis if our calculated chi-square exceeds the critical value at the chosen level of significance which would cause us to conclude that heteroscedasticity is present in the model. So the steps are as follows. First, we're going to run our regression model such as this. This is a four-variable model, which I'm going to use as example right now. And then we're going to obtain the residuals of the model, square them, and run a regression of the squared residuals against the independent variables. And out of that, we're going to construct this statistic that you see right here, which is the product of the sample size and the coefficients of determination from this brush pagan specification right here. And with that, we're going to test the null hypothesis of no heteroscedasticity by examining the test statistic we have conducted. So to show that up, I'm going to use this simple data set right here. All right, so let's um, go to Excel real quick, which as you can see, when I plot the residuals against the predicted value, uh, it kind of gives us a sense that uh, something might be fishy. Although be careful now, what I'm about to show right now is just an example. In reality, you do want to use a lot more than this number of observations. So let's uh, go ahead and deal with this. Right, so right here, I'm going to go to Data on Excel and go to Data Analysis, and then I'm going to select Regression right there. All right, OK it. And then for Y, I'm going to highlight it, shade it in blue to draw your attention, click here for the axis, and then I'm going to highlight all of them right there, and then click here for labels so the computer knows the first row consists of labels, and I'm going to leave it at the default 5% level, which is 95% confidence interval, click here for output, and click right here. While cursor is blinking in here, I'm going to select a spot on the spreadsheet so the cell address is registers right here. Now, be sure to go ahead and check residuals. And if you want to, if you check residual plots, it's going to give you residuals as well. But what the heck, let's click on residuals as well. So, OK. And here we go. So you can see the residual plots here. These are residuals plotted against the individual values of the axis, as you see right there. But anyways, right down here, we have the predicted values of y, and we have the residuals, right? And, and I'm just going to overtype the residuals. I'm going to call it E, all right? And uh, to, make, to improve clarity, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, soup it up like so, all right? So you can see clearly what I'm doing, 
all right like that okay so now I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna compute my e squared all right so e squared I'm just uh, you know make it uh, so it's obvious so go ahead and square the two by hitting superscribe right there there you go so all I'm gonna do hit equal and click on this hat 2 will square it and then I, I copy down that's it so now these are the squared values of the residuals now I'm gonna run a regression where this guy here is gonna be my dependent variable and uh, for that I go to data go to data analysis and regression it's still there okay now this time for my Y I'm gonna go down here and highlight this and I'm gonna leave here uh, leave this here for my X because it's already identifying this input that you see right here now for my outputs clean that up while cursor is blinking right there let's choose a spot such as there and uh, this time I no longer want the residuals or the plots so let's go ahead and um, and okay it and here's the output and these are the two things I want the R squared from this regression all right highlight it and the sample size from the regression highlight it and with that I'm gonna construct the chi-squared statistic which is equal sample size multiplied by this R squared from the from this regression so this is my observed chi-squared value which you can see is about six points all right and then I'm gonna uh, the degrees of freedom here by the way which you saw before is k minus 1 k minus 1 where k is the number of parameters there are three parameters here and you can see them right here parameter for the intercept for each of the independent variables so there are four of them so 4 minus 1 gives us 3 so with that we look up the critical value from the chi-square table so here's my chi-square table degrees of freedom is 3 right there and at the 5% level this is my guy right here right which is the critical value at which the area to the right of it equals 5% that's 7.8 so my critical value is 7.8 and as you can see this calculated value is below this critical value so I'm gonna to go to my PowerPoint to summarize it so you can see it real nicely right there okay so this is uh, these are the results of the um, regression which gave me these residuals right here and then I squared them and regressed them across these explanatory variables using this um, new regression right here and this is the summary out of the regression and with this I calculated my chi-square statistic which is the product of the sample size and the uh, what I call brush pagan coefficient of determination you see it right here it gave me six and then at uh, three degrees of freedom which is k minus one where k is the number of parameters including the intercept now I looked up the critical value from the chi-square table which gave me 7.8 and because my calculated chi-square value of 6 is less than the critical value I did not reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity concluding that there is no evidence of heteroscedasticity in that error variances are equal and that's it